You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 240 of Horsemanship Radio, brought to you by Hands on Gloves, the all-in-one revolutionary bathing grooming gloves. Horsemanship Radio is a part of the family of the Horse Radio Network, and today comes to you from Bajetos, Brazil, where I sat down with Monty and two really remarkable people who are making history for Brazil and their animals. This is Debbie Laux, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thanks for joining us. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 1st and the 15th of the month, and I have my trusty producer with me, Jen. How are you, Jen? Greetings. I'm doing just great. I got a question. How far in advance do you have to plan a trip to Brazil? Yeah, you know, it's not as bad these days as it probably used to be, but we started talking about this pretty early on in the year because... It's not just a, um, a vacation where you, you know, roll out of the airplane and start drinking Mai Tais or something. You know, we had, <laughs> we had we had to arrange for being able to see wild horses. We had to have a round pin that was uh, regulation, you know, for Monty. And uh, there was a lot doing. So it, it isn't just a trip to see things. It was a trip to do things. So you, Monty went down and did demos for the people that came to the world's largest rodeo. Did you did yeah. you get a chance to do anything with ponies, get some horse hair under your fingernails? We did. With all these wild ones, we did. Actually, our team got to do that. And I will tell you, I mean, we actually had two demonstrations. I would say one was a little bit more like a clinic, and it was off, you know, it would be like a breakout session, you know. But the stadium was a 9 p.m. Uh, gladiator, huge, huge event. And I'll describe that a little bit for you too. But but the, um, the clinic one, w- the horses were so wild that, <laughs> you know the expression? They were kept in little pens behind. And the first one that dad uh, thought, oh, this is, this is the best one to, to give all the signs. You know, he's just really demonstrative and sensitive and everything. Got him in the round pen let him in with another horse in front of him, you know, in fairness. I mean, they were halter broke, uh, you know, um, sort of. They had halters on. And uh, and he couldn't catch it. Once it went in there, wouldn't do a join up, screamed the whole time for the horses that were at the other end of the arena, um, brought in our team. We had crack team of Denise Heinlein, who's our advanced instructor. We had Miguel, Miguel Lupiano, who's a huge guy, Brazilian certified instructor. We had Valdo Franco, who is a newly minted instructor and been working with dad a lot. Um, me, we never caught the horse. We never caught that horse in the 50 foot round pen. So what we did was we got one of the gentler horses, <laughs> relative, and we went in there and we let this horse just follow him back out through the audience, by the way, this is Brazil. (laughs) And he just followed loosely behind this other horse and went right back in the pen. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Mm -hmm. That was the only way we were going to do it. That's never happened with dad before. So you might go like, Oh, so you say he failed. So dad gets this other horse that was really sweet in there does the most amazing join up, first saddle, first rider, everything goes like clockwork. It was really cool. So then what they do is they queue up. I mean, this line is all the way around this huge arena arena area and over by the carnival even. And the, I think dad sat there for another two hours answering questions. He always pulls the people and says, what was your favorite part? Something like that, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think it was? Well, you set me up for the question. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it was the first horse. But he at first he was like, what do you mean the first horse? We didn't really get anything done with the first horse. And they said all the different things that you tried and all the different ways that you dealt with this horse, you didn't rope him. You didn't trap him. You didn't want to drug him. You didn't want to do. And that's and they kind of admitted that their default, they're just super super good horsemen down there. And they're listening for what does the master do? 
when he's got a tough horse. Mm-hmm. And they said that was the most educational part for them because the other part, they're pretty familiar with dad's join ups and, mm-hmm. you know, first saddle, bridle and rider went pretty much like it should, even though it was a wild horse. But what they had never seen him try all these different advance and retreats. I mean, Denise is in there doing the, you know, back and forth and, and moving three guys in there around a horse without getting kicked or without forcing the issue, you know, so the horse never looked like paralyzed with fear or anything. It just, didn't want to be caught. And so all that was to say, wait for another day. Just give that horse another day. He wasn't ready that day. And you weren't going to force him just because there were three or 400 people sitting around well, watching. And that's very interesting because, you know, you, it's often stated by people who are trying to help others for somebody who is in the business of teaching others to be leaders. It's all you hear all the time about. It's not how you act or what you do when things are going well, it's how you act Mm -hmm. and what you do under adversity. (laughs) Right. And he clearly demonstrated when things aren't going the way you expected them to, Mm -hmm. the -hmm. default is not a B or C it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There you go. Yeah. Um, so that is a that is fascinating. It because, was good. But like you said, that yeah. just doesn't happen. And I think, oh, you didn't get that on video, did you? No. Oh, <laughs> I was, oh I would love no, to see it, that it because so I'm that, the same way. I, mean, I, I want to see how the process plays out. Well, we did little snippets. You know? I mean, we had Claudia Millman was there, by the way, too, and she's an advanced student. So she was outside the gate and she, you know, had her camera kind of stuck in the doorway. But there was that, oh, somebody's coming out the door. You know, you got to keep taking the camera away. Mm-hmm. And it was just her phone and everything. So we do have for our own educational purposes, we do have some snippets of it. But here's the real reason we didn't have a camera there. We're, we were right on the outskirts of the carnival, and they don't just say carnival when they're in Brazil. I mean, the decibels were <laughs> deafening. Dad's sound system could barely get over the top. It's ca- and carnival with capital letters. With some little car, with the, he'd open up the hatchback on the car, and there'd be, you know, if the car's worth $1,000, this thing was worth 10000 stuffed inside of it to yes. make a boombox. And and literally, they thought it was cool to go, not in a cool, bad way, but they thought it was fun to go around the outside of the arena playing. This thing. Wow! <laughs> oh my gosh! And and you know what? The audience didn't care. They it was just all part of the rodeo thing, you know. And so you couldn't have had a decent, you know, real. You, you could have with sound off. You could have a decent <laughs> video, but yeah. it was too loud. But when we got in the main stage, uh, this stadium. Uh, holds 50 plus 50,000 people. And it's just like any football stadium that has the running uh, graphics around the outside lights rolling, you know, and they have fireworks and everything else. So at least, you know, we kept saying, well, thank God the stadium is going to be quieter. (laughs) 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 And it was, frankly, I'm not quiet. I wouldn't say that, but it would definitely be, it was an easier environment to control than it was in this outer arena thing that we did. It it was wild. And I, w- I want to get dad on the podcast too and have him describe from his standpoint how that horse worked because it really is the hour that he took with this horse to start in the stadium was quite remarkable, really cool. It speaks well of the horse, the breed, and the people there who are very agriculturally based and very interested in everything that a good horseman does. And I will say it was not your it was not a rodeo crowd. It was a horsemanship crowd. And I really mean that. These these people understand cows, cattle, um they have everything down there. And like I said, you're going to hear today from the direct, one of the directors of the rodeo. He's the veterinarian, the head veterinarian, uh, Dr. Kiko de Almeida Prado. He's going to be our second interview. And he's been 40 years as the head vet for this rodeo. And you'll hear him talk. But it's when I say rodeo, I think, you know, people think PBR or maybe what happens in Las Vegas. This is really more, it's on 500 acres, first of all, which is huge. And there are over 3,000 animals that he's responsible for. And um, it's really an agriculturally based expo, I would say, or equestrian event that way, because there's a lot more of that. The PBR brings the rodeo in, which is the attraction. They also have concerts 
all night long, literally until the sun comes up, the concerts are going and fireworks and everything. So it, it's the biggest thing they do all year and anything in Brazil is big. So it happens to be the biggest thing in the world. Well, well, we'll get right to our first guest right after we hear from our title sponsor. We couldn't do the show without him. Hands on gloves. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts. And am I excited to bring you the news of a revolutionary, new, all-in-one, shedding, bathing, grooming tool. Hands-on gloves. They are fantastic. And you believe me, I've tried them all. Hands-on outperforms traditional curry combs, shedding blades, metal bristles, and all those things. Most animals will gravitate to you for more grooming and petting time. If you wear them, your animals will love you more for it. While using the hands-on gloves, you can easily handle water hoses, shampoo bottles, lead ropes, leashes, and anything you want with them on your hands. They are easy to clean, and they massage muscles and stimulate circulation while helping to distribute natural oils for a healthy skin and coat. Hands-on is changing the way we bathe, de-shed, and groom our animals forever. Hands-on gloves. They are fantastic. And just to set the scene a little bit for our interview, which was pre-recorded by me um, with Monty down there, with Pedro Enrique Barrentero. Uh, he's a lovely man who um, is a civil engineer. You know, this is, this is the, uh, what? How did you end up? wanting to go cross country on a mule all the way to the United States. So he's going to go to Laredo, Texas from Brazil. He has a wonderful dog named Bastian and he looks like a, more like a shepherder uh, to me, you know, a gaucho kind of uh, with his Bastian is one of those uh, lovely sheep dogs, Australians that is so smart, you know, looks like he can read and write under the table <laughs> when, when you're talking to him. And um, and Pedro has won, you'll hear in the interview too, championships with this curled horn. It's one of those huge longhorn horns that he blows through. And I mean, the guy, no trumpet player has anything on this guy. He's, he's really good. And, but there's certain things that he calls out to his um, herd and, and it's cattle mostly that they herd, but he herds on mules. So he's quite the horseman and he's a, a lovely interview and he speaks pretty good English. So I don't have to have that translated. And dad wanted to sit down with him and talk about coming to Bishop, California, maybe and coming to see us. Bishop has this thing called mule days and it's pretty famous out here in the West. Anybody who loves mules like we do, they're, they're such a intelligent hybrid of horses and donkeys, right? Uh, has been to the Bishop Mule Days, I'm sure, because it's it's sort of the epicenter. It's it's the Kentucky Derby <laughs> of mules. And not that it's a race, it's everything, every discipline they have. So have a listen to Pedro. He's he's a really interesting guy. And it was a really fun interview. So we're in a we're in a media room that they have there on the grounds and people are coming and going. So you hear a little background noise. And of course, Bastion is between his legs under the table, um, jumping up every once in a while when he blows on this horn to see what's going on. So it's pretty cute. Well, I am sitting here with two very good agriculturally based gentlemen. And that's where it kind of starts. But it doesn't end there now, does it? Because I've got Pedro here. Could you say your name for us, please, Pedro? For sure. The, my name is Pedro Henrique Biondo Matias, as noted by Pedro Henrique Berranteiro, também, uh, also Berranteiro das Américas. Okay, now we're not going to test anybody on that, but that was helpful to me. Thank you for not making me say all of that together. But we're going to call you Pedro in this, all right, this all right. interview. And I'm also sitting with... Monty Roberts. Yes, and you were all in Brazil. We're in Barretos, Brazil. And I took this opportunity because I saw your dog first, Bastion. <laughs> and he's lovely. He's one of those smart yeah, dogs that lovely. is a cattle. Does he work anything besides cattle or is it? Yeah, for sure. But also, he, first of all, he's like my son. So I have he, I have he like my pet. But also he's very smart and he knows everything about the, the cattle. And he's, very, he's the best part, partner that I have. Yeah, he's your son. He's I love that. It, it sounds a little bit like some people will hear about Felipe Lete here mm -hmm. in Brazil, who is a Canadian, traveled to Brazil. It was Brazilian mm -hmm. first, actually, and then went to Canada. 
and he's he's a big deal around here this week because they're making a movie of yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. So you made me think, Pedro, when mm-hmm. you talked about riding mules mm-hmm. in Americas. Tell us what your goals are. Well, uh, actually, I'm going to travel to Brazil from United States with an old Ford truck, uh, 89, just me and my dog, first of all. And we are going to cross the America, uh, passing about uh, most part of the, the countries of South America and Central America until I get to North America for Laredo, Texas. Laredo, Texas, yeah. okay. This trip will spend six months until I get there. And um, when I cross the border from the United States, I will uh, road for my six for my six months that is what my visa uh, my my permission of my visa but i will make a trip just on the west side like the wild west the wild wild west yeah where all the horses are yep for sure yeah i have a schedule for passing for the texas oklahoma i'm wyoming idaho uh, oregon and Nevada, but only only of the West and California also. Oh, good, because we're going to try to get you <laughs> yeah. to come see us. And I really, really want to meet Bishop, the Mule Day. The Mule Days and Bishop. Now, Dad, you've been a part of the Well, and you've attended, right? I have attended, and I had a champion mule, race mule. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and what was her name? I don't remember her yeah, name. That's all right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but no, that's I'm okay. 88 years old. You're forgiven. And I don't remember her name. <laughs> But this was 35, 40 years ago, and uh, it was a fantastic experience because I love mules, and I've had champion mules in raining, and the champion shows for mules, raining, and working cattle, too. And, uh, you know, I think dogs love the mules more than they love the horses. Is that right? Because, yeah, mules can kick hard but they only kick when they're angry with you Mm -hmm. and they become very much friends of the dogs and they will become friends of the people too and uh, I love mules they have tough feet they don't go lame they don't get sick so much they have strong insides and uh, I'm, I'm anxious to have Pedro come and spend time at my farm in California. Oh yeah, because thank I you. think the people around there would love to thank see. Thank you, thank you so and much. And if if Bastian comes, then <laughs> I'll I'm be going. there. We're in. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And Bastian goes with. For sure, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. How did, what inspired you to do this? How did you well, come up with this plan? Um, the hero of Felipe was I'm chiefly, and uh, he inspired. Felipe Massetti to, to cross America with horse. Yeah. And when Felipe um, came to Brazil, um, I, I'm going to Barretos with them. I, I, I make the, the finish with them, uh, 100 kilometers w- wow. with him. And he inspired me, but I'm a civil engineer. And civil engineer. I, I let this dream off and start to work, uh, finish my, my studies and uh, I, I, I am civil engineer for five years, and my always with that dream on the past, uh, making my head thinking about do this again. Mm. That's why uh, two years ago, uh, I started planning everything again to make this trip, to go to United States with my old Ford truck and my dog, and then returning to Brazil with two mules. Mm. I know that uh, there's a dunking, actually. I, I know that I have one animal, for sure. Uh, it's a donkey, but I have to find another an- another animal uh, in some place in the United States. Don't I don't know, know where. where. I don't know where he is. Oh. But I have one. It's a, it's a good start, because uh, I didn't start my, my trip. And, uh, I, and also, I have one, one animal, a on donkey. And, so you still have plans to put together. For so, sure. So Monty has a saying, it's good to have a plan. It's very good to have a plan. Yeah. But don't fall in love with it. <laughs> Things plans change. Can, plans sure. can change. And uh, right here in Brazil on this trip, I changed my plans several for sure. times for yeah. this, this, this. You know, horses don't sit down and work things out for you. 
you have to meet them and their needs yeah. and uh, it's fantastic to come to Brazil now and be uh, you might say a hero because when I first came to Brazil then the people you can't blame the people but they did the traditional things that came from sure. Portugal and uh -huh. Spain mm -hmm. and that was the horse has to know who's boss mm -hmm. so you have to be strong with the horse and they thought my uh, work was sissy mm -hmm. like a sissy you know he's he's not this is not good work everybody's going to get killed if they try his work whoa not so i don't get killed and you don't get killed horses want to be our partner yeah not our servant mm -hmm. and so you don't treat them like a servant you treat them like a partner same as bastion yeah i know what you're talking about one complete the other one completes the other and uh, the people here have changed i can't believe it uh, when i first came was was very difficult for me to show it to them but brazilian people are not stupid and they they watched me then they try it at home yeah and it works and so now i'm working really hard to bring instructors to this country to teach my work properly yeah and valdo franco he brought me here on this trip mm -hmm. he came to my farm first and he learned so fantastic and became a certified instructor in my work and miguel lupiano did the same thing from the north of of uh, brazil and a long time ago so he's been an instructor for a long time and those courses are going on now and uh, we have a lady from from uh, Germany uh, and uh, we brought her Denise in. Denise so we brought her in to balance this male thing out because there were too many well, males yeah, <laughs> but the, the girls do as well or better than the men Thank do Thank you and Denise Heinlein is here because she comes back and forth to South America and to Germany but her home is Germany but now she's been a certified instructor for something I don't know like 15 or 18 years or something like this and um, I, I just couldn't be more proud of those people that are working here and I want them once in a while to bring me back if I live long enough to come back because the people now say hey Monty Roberts this is good And uh, I had a horse that was not so easy the other night with 30,000 yeah, people. Did I you saw, get I saw. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 30,000 people. It was amazing. What you was know, your impression, Pedro? Uh, that's why he, he is here. He's the best uh, to do you, that. You know what my biggest audience was before this audience here? No. 7,000. Wow. Was my biggest. And I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was better than any horseman ever had for their principles. Now yeah. 30,000 people. Here in Brazil is the biggest rodeo of the Brazil. And was a tough horse. And I thought, oh, these people are going to get up and walk out. No, they come to me. I want to take a picture with you. I want to shake your hand. Yeah. They believe in it now. They love it. Yeah. So it's really changing. And uh, nothing could uh, make me feel better than the world changing to take violence out of the training of horses. For sure. Yeah. It's the same thing with my dog. Mm -hmm. That's uh, like I'm training with, with love, not the violence. And that's why we are always together and we have uh, a passion one for another. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that Monty do with the horses. I, I believe that. I believe so too. What are you proudest about your country right now? Well, I'm proud is about, uh, first of all, my culture. It's a culture that uh, maybe 500 years that was constructing year by year. And the Behanti is something new. Mm -hmm. It's something about uh, 80, 50, 80, 50, zero years. Mm -hmm. uh, very centuries on the past. Centuries, yeah. A and, long uh, tradition. It's something that only exists here in Brazil. but. Uh, we can we can talk about the Hebrews that use the shofar, but it's a ritual religion of 
uh, horn, is, but it's different here in Brazil. For us, it's, uh, it's for transport the cattle, the cattle to one place for another, and that's something that I have to proud. Yeah. And uh, here in Brazil, I am four times national championship here in Barretos. I was going to ask you about that. Four times national champion. Now, listeners can't see the horn, but we'll have, yeah. we'll have photos on the notes, the show notes. But it is a ginormous, what is that, three feet long? For sure. A uh, meter? Yeah, one meter. <laughs> A one meter, meter long, and yeah. it makes a gargantuan size <laughs> noise. Sorry, yeah, music. yeah. Mm, it's, a, it's a very high. And so you have different, like how many different uh, sounds come out of it, so that you call the cattle in. That was yeah, pretty. For sure, I will explain. Well, uh, it's made by horn of cows yep. or bulls, yep. and it's very difficult to uh, fabricate. Uh, behind you because have to be the same diameter, the same curve, and the same color. So it's one horn from uh, one cattle different of another, and uh, that's why it's hard to produce something like that. But well, uh, we used on the past for transport cattle, right? And and we play four sounds uh, to stimulate the cattle for getting more slower or getting more faster and also for communicating with the peons. Uh, here in Brazil, we, we don't say cowboys. For sure, exit cowboy here. We could, uh, the culture of the American cowboys came here, but uh, the culture that I represent is peão de boiadeiro. So uh, when the peões de boiadeiro um, wake up, uh, they are setting the, the animals and we play the first the, the first sound is called by saída it's for the beginning of the journey of the day it's a play it's a sound that have to be more slower for wake up uh, slower mm-hmm. can i play for you or later? i would love that i would love that so this is the coffee one this is where they wake up for sure to the coffee exactly. yeah. okay yes exactly. please play it's for uh, join the kettle for do they start actually circle first, around and go like, oh, yeah, he's getting us yeah, up out yeah. of bed? Okay. First start right. the journey of okay. the day. We're ready. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So now they're... They're doing what? They're lifting their heads. They're saying, oh, Pedro wants us to roust about. Yeah? Well, and then what? So the, the second sound is called by estradão. It's the counter of the first. It's for you to stimulate the cattle to getting more faster. Okay. So uh, now you've got them going when, and you want when, to move them? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's for moving. When the cattle is tired, but you have to stay on your your place for, for lunch, for example. Yeah. You have to make the cattle going my f- more faster. Okay. Something interesting that the cattle uh, d- doesn't understand the sound of behind you for magical. Oh, oh it's something that yeah. is is whisp- is a cat cattle whisper. No, not nothing right? like that. Yeah. It's for uh, you training the cattle day by day, uh, and maybe five five days the cattle uh, started to know the sound sure. because it's something that you have that the cattle understand. For example, this display, this this sound, the estradão. Uh, all all the, the the cowboys, the peões de boiadeiro, have to put the the cattle ahead. Hey, come on, come on! So five five days later, only for heard the sound, they know yeah. what I'm in trying to days. talking about. You train them in five days. Yeah. 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 Okay. What's the third sound? Uh-huh. The third sound is for dangerous. Oh. It's a sign for you call. Um, a partner that is is back inside for come here oh, and so the, one of the, the yeah, yeah for it's for it's for help uh, hey come on I, I need a help here or 
there is a dangerous here. Uh, there is a onsa. It's a, like a jaguar uh, ahead. Wow. So you have to, to call a, a friend for, for helping you in some kind of uh, different situations. Okay, so we call that 911. What's it sound like here? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's calling like, hey, come on, come yeah, here, yeah. I need help. You don't want to hear that sound. I, I make an analogy. Okay. It's like was the cell phone or the radio yeah. of the peão de boiadeiro. But this sound, this sound, it's uh, for only the peão, the, the, the peões, uh, uh, not yeah. for the cattle. Yeah, yeah. And the Ford, for, for finish, it's okay. for, for lunch. It's for, for lunch, okay. For lunch. okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So call us for lunch. Yeah. That, I, that one I'd like to hear. The other oh, one, not great, so much. Great. I have to tell all the people something that they can't see What's in that? this interview. Bastion is sleeping on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> and care. Bastion heard the wake up and he stood up off of my boot. He knows. He people knows. who have good heart. That's oh. why he's on a foot. He's, he's sleeping on my feet. <laughs> He, but he woke up like this when he said to wake up. Mm -hmm. And then when he said go slowly, then he just raised his head and <laughs> opened his eyes and stayed there like that. And when he said there was a problem, ooh, he got very <laughs> nervous about it. There's something dangerous here. <laughs> It's unbelievable. They can't see Bastion, but yeah. he's incredible. I train for he understands. He's trained for it. That's good. Is I he think, going to lunch next? I think he yeah. can speak English if he just tries yeah. to oh, He knows. So <laughs> yeah. Ooh, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Well, I hope that you will continue the right. traditions, All but right. I also hope that you will bring some progressive Monty Roberts concepts for sure. in your for, lexicon, too. For sure. He's a hero for me, and it will be a pleasure to visit him in California. I'd love to see that. And love to it will see be that. amazing for me. Hi, Debbie. I just had to write and tell you how much I'm enjoying Monty's podcast on Horsemanship Radio. You and Monty and your podcast guests are my company every evening while I'm feeding, cleaning, and finishing up barn chores for the day. I especially enjoyed the recent podcast 158 because so many of the guys that Monty talked about, and especially Greg Ward, were heroes of mine when I was growing up. It was really fun to be a fly on the wall listening to Monty recount all those stories. And I also enjoyed his discussion with Tanya Johnston about the deer and sigmotaxis. Thanks for all the great information you and your dad are spreading throughout the world. And thanks for making the time doing my barn chores, no chore at all. All the best, Nan Meek. Well, Jen, I hope you enjoyed that and Pedro and Monty and Bastion. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be there. And we had Faldo there. We had Miguel Lupiano in the room too. And um, it, it just felt like you'd gone exported to some really far off place. You know, it was it was so really very fun. exotic, very, exotic, very yes. exotic, very exotic. I mean, we're all in, you know, we had scarves flowing and hats on and it was really fun anyway. Um, but Dr. Kiko. So there is a man. Everybody just knows him by Kiko. His name is Dr. Kiko de Almeida Prado. Uh, 40 years he's been at this as a director of the rodeo in the capacity of being the head veterinarian. He has several veterinarians working under him at any one time and then tons of volunteers, vet techs, that kind of thing, working on all those to keep all the horses safe and healthy. And not only in the rodeo part, they very, you know, skeptical and looking over the shoots are always like within a foot of anything that's going on in the rodeo. But they also are taking care of these herds that come in, the sheep, the cattle, the uh, amazing um, exotic animals that they have down there too, and exotic breeds of horses that are really interesting too. So uh, we'll get right to it, Dr. Kiko. So I'm sitting here today with Valdo Franco, who's one of our certified instructors, Monty Roberts certified instructors, and a wonderful man named Kiko who is famous here at Bajetos, the rodeo, the largest rodeo on earth, 
certainly the largest one I've ever been to in my life. But it's not just about what you think of as a typical rodeo in the U.S. This is a huge, I would call it an expo, an exposition of wonderful horses. Would you tell Kiko that? Ela está dizendo que ela está... Ela está dizendo que ela está sentando aqui com o Kiko é, no maior rodeio que ela já teve, que ela chamaria de uma exposição nos Estados Unidos, né? É um rodeio muito grande. Mm. And what I wanted to talk about today is that you sat with Monty, my father. E o que eu gostaria é, de conversar hoje, falar sobre o dia que você sentou com meu pai, com Monty, para conversar. And you, being the official veterinarian here, got to share with Monty some of the progressive, I believe, progressive beliefs and concepts that you have here as the veterinarian for Bahaitos. Então, é, você sendo veterinário oficial, você falou para o Monte das evoluções que você fez por ser o veterinário oficial do rodeio, as melhorias que você fez para as montagens, para os equipamentos. I feel like you know Monty because I watched you in the shoots. É, eu sinto que você conhece o Monty porque você ficou vendo ele nos Brits. And you were like two old friends. E parecia que vocês eram dois velhos amigos. <laughs> so tell us a little bit. Give us some insight as to what you were talking about down there and what was what were you thinking in common about the animals? Então fala para nós um pouquinho do que vocês dois estavam conversando lá embaixo perto dos Brits e o que, que vocês acharam. Eu 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 me, me dei me identifiquei muito com o Monte. I've identified I have identified myself a lot with Monty. Porque eu senti que ele pensa igual a mim. Because I felt he thinks like me. Eu perto dele sou um, um grão de areia. Uh, me near Monty, I'm just like um, peas in a pod. Yes. <laughs> Mas é, eu rezo muito por disciplina. But I pray a lot for discipline. Mm -hmm. Horário. Timing. Mm -hmm. E seriedade no que é feito aqui dentro do, da minha do, de minha área e da área das pessoas que eu oriento. And serious work in the area that I work, and for the people that works with me in my area. Eu sou muito duro na hora de exigir. I am very tough to ask people. E o Monte é uma pessoa que eu sinto isso também nele. And I feel that Monte is the same way. Mm -hmm. E a gente conversou lá sobre ele viu pouco, ficou pouco nos Brits para ver o tipo de montada de montaria em boi, não é? He, he stayed, we talked about while he was at the shoots. He stayed there a bit uh, so we could talk about how the ride works. E a gente conversou sobre tudo. Uma coisa que ele me falou que me deixou até muito. Yeah, we we talked about a whole bunch of things, and one of the things that he said that left left me. Me deixou muito assim. É, grande, sim. O dia que ele falou para as meninas do do canal rural lá, da, da, que fez uma entrevista aqui. So he he let he made me feel super the day that he talked with the people from the rural channel. Que elas deviam vir conversar comigo. Ah, uh, so the day he was interviewed by the rural channel, I was really honored and felt big when I discovered that Moni told them while interviewing him that he should that they should come and talk to me. E isso me deixou muito envaidecido. Aí você não vai saber falar. And, and, but that made me feel super proud. Porque a vida inteira because my entire life eu andei por um caminho I follow the path que eu podia voltar em cima dele se fosse preciso. That I could always go back on the same path if I ever needed. I built a path. I walked a path in my life, uh -huh. a right path uh -huh. that could always walk back on that path. E a gente só consegue fazer isso. And we can only achieve that quando tem certeza 
do foco. When we're set, when we are certain of our focus. E disciplina e trabalho. Mm -hmm. And when we have discipline and hard work. Mm -hmm. Perfecto. I know that Monty believes in the animal first. Eu sei que o Monte acredita que o animal vem primeiro. But he also believes in safety for the people. Mas ele the também, cowboy. Mas ele também acredita na segurança para as pessoas para o cowboy. Mm -hmm. And he wants to make it. Um, e ele quer fazer. He wants to make it better for the rodeo because he believes if you if you let people think too much about the animal or the person, people want it to go away. They want to ban things rather than make things better. Ele quer ajudar a fazer as coisas. O monte quer ajudar a fazer as coisas melhor para o rodeio, é, para as pessoas. Porque se eles pensar muito, aí eles querem banir as coisas do rodeio. He doesn't believe in banning anything. E ele não acredita em banir qualquer coisa que for. Ele não acredita em banir o monte. And I believe you believe the same way. Am I right? E ela acredita que você pensa da mesma maneira. Ela está certa? Perfeito. Eu acho que a gente no rodeio tem que ter respeito. I believe we at the rodeo we have to have respect. Pelos animais. For the animals. E pelas pessoas. And for the people. Para que a gente consiga. So that we can achieve. Dar um espetáculo sério. A e good com segurança. A good event. Uh, a spectral event and with safety. Now, I think I heard <coughs> that you had 3,000 animals on the grounds here. Eu acho que você me falou que você tinha mais ou menos 3 mil animais que você recebe aqui no evento. Is that right? Yes. yes. Correct. That is a lot of animals to take care of. Esses são muitos animais para cuidar. Do you sleep during the two weeks of Barretos? Você dorme nas duas semanas de Barretos? <laughs> Muito pouco. <laughs> Very little. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. How many people do you have helping you on your team? Quantas pessoas você tem te ajudando no seu time? Uma 60, 70 pessoas. About 60 to 70 people. That's amazing. And are they all veterinarians or vet techs? Isso é impressionante. Eles são todos veterinários? Não. No. Tem quatro veterinários formados. Four graduated vets. Tem uma série de estagiários. There's a whole uh, bunch of interns. E, a mai, e uma grande parte que maneja o gado das provas cronometradas. In a big part are the people handling the cattle for the different competitions mm -hmm. with yeah. the horses. And you have lots of different competitions to, to make sure you get to. E você tem muitos tipos de competições para fazer. Tem. Tem yeah. três ou quatro competições. About three or four. Yeah. É run short. Run sorting. Tin pen. Tin penny. Barrel. Barrel racing. Barrel racing. E, é, e mais ou menos isso. Actually, those are the main three, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. It's been really Esse fun. ano chegou em Barretos 650 cavalos. So, we had in Barretos this year for the rodeo uh, competition 650 horses. De, de timpen, de run short e de tambor. Of timpening, ran sorting and barrel racing. So the balance are cattle or bulls? É, então o balanço é bois é, <coughs> e gado. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. É, só de gado de Tim Penny e Run Short eu tinha 250 cabeças. Uh, the cattle for Tim Penny and Run Shorting we had about 250 heads. Yeah, that's a lot of responsibility. And so you've been here how many years now? Isso é muita responsabilidade. Então você tem estado aqui por quantos anos? Faz? 40. 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. What is Kiko going to do when he finally goes fishing? <laughs> O que você vai fazer quando você finalmente for pescar, começar a pescar? É, eu não tenho vontade de parar de trabalhar nunca. I don't have any willing of stop working ever. Eu quero sair um dia de casa do jeito que eu tô. 
I'd like to live home one day the way I'm dressed now. E voltar morto. And come back dead. <laughs> Wish we could time those things sometimes, but I think you and Dad also believe that way too. É, eu espero que eu, a gente, eu gostaria que a gente pudesse saber quando isso ia acontecer, qualquer yeah. hora, mas eu acredito yeah. que ninguém que sabe. Yeah. Você e meu pai pensam igual. <laughs> Good. I hope to see you here again soon then. É, eu espero te ver aqui em breve novamente. Fica o meu convite de novo para vocês voltarem o ano que vem. Yeah, I leave here my invitation for you guys to come back yeah. next year. Ou se quiser ficar aqui, a gente vê cavalo aí todo dia. <laughs> Or if you want to stay, we'll, we'll take you to see some horses every day. <laughs> Thank you, Kiko. Thank you. Whisper the language of the herd. Listen, you don't have to say a word. It's time for Jamie Jennings to fetch an email from Monty Roberts' inbox and share a morsel of Monty's wisdom in a little segment we like to call Ask Monty. Leave this world a better place in the, the magic in the language of the earth. Dear Monty, I attended one of your demonstrations recently and was anxious to learn every detail of your work. I sailed boats as a kid and I heard you mention a few knots that you said were useful. Can you please tell me which ones you use and why? Monty's answer. Knots are a subject that I often visit during the course of one of my demonstrations. I believe it is essential that every horse person has a good working knowledge of the essential half dozen or so knots that are most often used when working with horses. The bowline is a knot that, in my opinion, anyone calling himself a horseman absolutely must understand. It's a knot that can be tied around the horse's neck, and no matter how hard they pull, it won't allow the rope to get tighter. Thus, it is virtually impossible for the horse to choke himself with the bowline knot. It is also true that no matter how much pressure is applied to the rope, the bowline, unlike many knots, will remain in such a state that it is easy to untie. One can put a bowline knot in a rope, tow a truck with it, and then pop it loose very easily. In the world of tying horses up, there are several slip knots that can be employed. One will tighten up on the post, and another won't. Some are easier to untie if the horse is in trouble, and some are more difficult. One should become familiar with two or three of the best slip knots to use when tying a horse to a post, tree, or hitch track. The clove hitch is a knot that has several forms and applications. It has many uses in the horse industry, and one should become familiar with it. The clove hitch can be used in combination with various slip knots. It is the type of knot that would keep a rope from sliding down a sleek pole that a horse is tied to. In sailing, one must become familiar with dozens of knots. It doesn't seem too much to ask to ask that a horseman become familiar with the variation of three knots, whose use will dramatically improve the safety of both people and horses. The knowledge of the bowline, the slip knot, and the clove hitch is essential for every horse person. Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged. In October here at Flag is Up Farms, California Horse Center, we have the introductory exam starting so you know who you are who are quaking a little bit about taking your exams that's the october 9 through 13 and then right after that we have a mountain trail play day that's october 14 then 16 through 28 is the introductory course of horsemanship and that is um, broken up into modules if you need to that's 16 through 18 is module one first steps to Monty's methods then 19 through 21 is the module two join up then module three is 23 through 25, introductory course module three, that's long lining. And then it wraps up with October 26 through 28 is module four, preparation for the intro exams. Then in November, we have another horse in healing, November three through five. The 11th, we have a mountain trail play day. The 13th through the 21st, we have advanced exams. 27th through December 15th, we have the advanced course. And then Come for the Mountain Trail Play Day at Christmas time. It's going to be so much fun on the 9th of December. January, we have 8th through 12th, a Gently Wild Horse Course. On the 20th, we have a Mountain Trail Play Day. On the 27th, we have a Horsemanship 101. Those are super popular. So 
get in early on that one. That one fills up fast. February, we have five through nine, the Mani special training. And I'll stop there because that's a gorgeous place to stop. <laughs> it's a gorgeous place to stop. <laughs> There's a lot going on at Flag is Up Farms California Horse Center. And you can find the calendar and so much more at MontyRoberts.com. You can also find this podcast there. If you're one of those listeners that doesn't subscribe via a, an app on your phone and you listen on your computer, you can head on over to Rob, MontyRoberts.com and the podcast is right there on the homepage. You just scroll down a little bit. Yep. If you'd like to speak to a kind, knowledgeable person at, at Flag is Up Farms, you can dial 805-688-6288. And by the way... MontyRoberts.com mm-hmm. has that phone number too. It's got it all. Yes. <laughs> Two places. No excuses. One That's stop it. shop. <laughs> <laughs> and for details about today's show, you can go to MontyRoberts.com and see this here podcast, or you can go to HorsemanshipRadio.com. And the HorsemanshipRadio.com is sort of that is home base for the podcast. That's yeah. pretty much what you'll find there is just the podcast. But you're yeah. going to have photos and links to today's guests and topics. And we love your feedback. We love to hear from you. You can like and love and follow Monty Roberts on Facebook. He's the one, just type in there, Monty Roberts, the one with the little blue check mark. He is also on Twitter as well as Instagram. The handle is Monty underscore Roberts. Yep. And many thanks to our sponsors who, as you said before, we could not do this without you. And we have a lot more fun doing it with you anyway. So it's Hands On Gloves. It's Jay Michelson and his team who are cleverly coming up with new things all the time, but have the best grooming, cleaning, bathing gloves on the market, and Monty Roberts University, which we we now have close to 800 lessons, Jen. Coming up on that 800th lesson, we're going to have some party. I don't know. That's a lot of content. And the best part about it is we still have dad cranking them out. Once a week, we we put up these lessons, and he has one about Bonita, this a polo pony that just would didn't trust anybody. And she was being a thoroughbred actually. And she was being retrained and she just to watch her trust. It's a lovely story. People should go to Monty Roberts, university.com. Be, be sure to visit all the other great shows too. While you're at it on the horse radio network at www.horseradionetwork.com. And until next time, have many happy horse hours. Okay.